In this episode of Travelog, I continue my travels around Udall County. I'll learn just how much work goes into making a nice cup of tea, discover what some Buddhists have done to try and attain immortality, and attempt to unravel the secrets of feng shui. Welcome back to Yudul County. If you've ever been to southern China, this may be a familiar sight. It's tea. As part of a billion dollar industry, China's national drink is also one of its biggest exports. And it's what's brought me to Mount Pangu. Hey, this is what tea? Ah,那这个呢？这个，这个也可以。这个也可以。啊，就是。但是这毛尖茶。就是它越小越好，就这一尖这块是吧？啊。哦，那这茶也特别香哈。Oh, that is good. Have a whiff yourself. But how is the raw vegetation turned into stuff we can actually drink? Well, as it happens, the amount of work needed depends on the kind of tea you want to produce. Anyway, I'm going to learn from the best. Oh, what a beautiful place, eh? So now that we've picked all the tea, it's time to go and fire him. Uh, ah. Many of the villagers living on Mount Pangu make their living from tea. Something I've learned is that typically, the more you process tea, the darker it becomes. That's why we have green, yellow, and black tea, despite all the leaves being green in the first place. <laughs> fingers crossed that I don't burn off my fingers. Okay. Oh, God, that is hot! Still pretty hot in here. Oh, 180 degrees, in fact. So you can imagine oh, just how hot it is in here. It's like a sauna. Oh. Uh, 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 Oh. God, it was like a, like a furnace in there. Right. So the good thing about tea country is that where there's tea, there's always good water that you need for drinking. Oh. I had to cool you down a bit. Looks simple enough. Just imagine you're kneading dough. It is so different. It, he makes it into a ball, whereas the mind just scatters. Can't disappoint. My first time making tea, I've got to do it right. There we go. And it's breaking up already. But doing this, I can feel the moisture leaving all of the tea. So I assume that after a couple more rolls, it should be dry enough to move on to the next stage. This should be how big tea <laughs> oh, the fragrance is absolutely amazing. Kind of salivating from uh, smelling all this tea. This Ah, 
，终于炒好的茶是吧？嗯，是是是。这个是叫什么茶？这个是龙珠茶，龙珠茶为什么叫龙珠茶？是我们的那个名称叫盘古龙珠。那那龙珠是什么样子？这个就是我们的盘古龙珠，盘古龙珠做出来的这个形状，嗯，是圆形球形。哦、oh, ， that's delicious，、嗯、a little bitter I have to say， but it's got this really nice crisp finish to it。And、uh, you know what they say: if you've done it yourself, it always tastes better. Tea culture is found in every aspect of Yudo life, though not always where you'd expect. This is the famous square dance that middle-aged ladies across China, and even some other parts of the world, love to practice as a form of exercise. So it looks like our girls from the plantation have added a few tea picking moves of their own. Don't try this at home, guys. Coming up next. I come face to face with China's answer to the Egyptian mummies, and learn about the lives and teachings of people who lived hundreds of years before us. Near the center of Yudu lies Fu Tian Temple. As I climb its steps, I can't help feeling this place is different. Founded in the Tang Dynasty over a thousand years ago, this is one of the most famous Zen Buddhist temples in southern China. It's seen its fair share of distinguished monks, but I'm about to meet one today who's become the stuff of legend. Oh wow, that statue is so well made. It's almost lifelike. Let you in on a little bit of a secret, though. That is what's called a living flesh Buddha, one of China's earliest, in fact. And inside that case was a real life monk. Hey, show me. 这就是咱们的肉身菩萨。哎，这就是咱们的肉身佛。我们这个肉身佛是唐代末元五代的时候得生的。他姓吴，他这个他姓吴，是姓湖南。哦、啊，他这个肉身怎么保留下来的呀？在往生的时候，他就作为他是火化的时候做官，成为一个金刚不坏身体，这个肉身佛。做钢。做钢。怎么怎么做？一个大这么大的缸，哎，他晚上以后就打盘坐下来，就放到他缸里面去，缸里面就放那个木炭啊，呃香啊，檀香木香，呃五颜六色的那个檀香放进去，再用用盖子盖上，盖盖多久？盖了三年，盖三年，最少三年以后就结。Oh. The Egyptians, of course, embalm their dead. But the Buddhist monks spent their final years ridding their body of toxins the natural way, by fasting. It was a huge gamble, though. If your body was found to have rotted after the vat was reopened, it'd bring great shame upon your temple. To me, this gruesome act seems to almost go against the Buddhist belief in impermanence. But I've been told that mummification was seen as a form of further enlightenment. The Chinese have always had a thing for immortality, as is obvious from the way they name certain landmarks. I'm making my way to Immortal Cow Cave, although I don't think I'll be bumping into any supernatural bovines along the way.
Oh, looks like I've found a secret passage. Not many people know about this because they don't know what's down there. Oh. Oh, looks prehistoric. At first glance, you might not be able to tell, but this place has been inhabited by people. On both sides of this cleft, you can find spaces where people have dug out of the cliff. And uh, back in the days, people used to come here to hide from, from bandits. You know, if there were wars going on outside, they'd come here with their family and their valuables. And archaeologists have even found earthenware dating back to 4,000 years ago. But today, all you can find, but probably the most prominent evidence you can find, is these walls. Stone walls where people used to live. This place is simply fascinating. Etched out along the cliffs are not just the compartments where people used to live, but also steps, grooves, and trenches. These mark the places where timber gates, drying racks, and even a stone mill would have once stood. I bet Indiana Jones would feel right at home here. Then again, the Chinese have always been good at making use of their surroundings, or at least describing them in verse. That's especially true here in southern China, where every mountain, river, and cliff seems to have its own story. Oh, well, here we are. You know, uh, in Yudo, one of the most famous destinations is this place, Lord Hien Yan. And in fact, for centuries, some of the most famous scholars and most famous people in China have come here to visit and leave their mark. Lord Hien Yan started becoming a must-visit place over 1,500 years ago, thanks to its commanding view of sandstone cliffs and forests. With time, its popularity grew, until eventually it became known less for its scenery than for the literati who'd come here to write inspired poems and inscriptions on its cliffs. Over the centuries, all sorts of famous people have come here to leave their marks on the wall, but probably the most famous is an inscription made by a gentleman called Yue Fei, who's considered to be the national folk hero of China and a symbol for loyalty, who 900 years ago wrote that, Tianzi Wanian, meaning long live the emperor. It's a marvellous statue. You know, it's incredible it's been able to be preserved for such a long time since that was built in the Ming Dynasty some 500 years ago. But there's a secret as to why all of this has been preserved because as soon as you come in, not only do you smell the incense, but you also smell this, this damp flavour because we're in a cave. And the reason they used to build temples in caves was because not only did it, did it save on construction costs, but it also protected people from the wind and the rain, which is why, after so many years, you still have that. Despite the glamour of its former red carpet patrons, at its heart, Lord Hien Yen still remains a modest place for quiet introspection. And it continues to attract budding literati, hoping to absorb the teachings of those who came before them.
哎，老师你好，学什么呢？学弟子规。弟子规啊、嗯，哦，他们几几年级了？五年级。怎么今天想到来这儿来学习啊？因为我们觉得让这些后代学习传统文化是非常必要的。哦、oh. ，It's pretty cute that、uh, even today students are still coming here to study, like the scholars who came here hundreds of years ago. 写上面的字儿呢<笑> ？Yeah, it's pretty interesting.、Uh, for a lot of students in China, they would come and sit underneath these walls to practice calligraphy, copying from the masters. And、uh, this one right here was written by a guy called Zhou Denyu, one of the most famous scholars in China, actually, who wrote、uh, some of the best. Known essays, one of which was Alian Shuo Ode to the Lotus Flower, which supposedly was written here. Many of China's best loved poems are actually life lessons. Well, this one encourages people to be like the lotus flower, which emerges from its muddy environment, clean and beautiful. The suggestion is that you should remain just and pure. No matter how bad your environment, to this day, "Ode to the Lotus Flower" is still a part of the school curriculum, imparting this important Confucian value. Coming up next, I try to understand how time, space, and the cosmos help you decide where to build your house. And I sample some of Yudol's best-loved local delicacies. You know, in China, especially here in the south, a lot of people still believe in feng shui, the ancient art of Chinese geomancy, which essentially boils down to how people interact with their environment and the benefits they reap from. Their surrounding mountains and rivers, which in turn go on to improve people's livelihoods and their fortunes. Whoa, that is an ancient tree. So、uh, we drove for about 30 kilometers from Yudou to get here to Hanjing Village because this place has loads of really beautiful ancient buildings. But more importantly, it's one of the most famous examples of good feng shui placement in China. And in fact, a lot of people from Southeast Asia would even come here to study feng shui. These days, Hanjing is looking a bit worse for wear. But you only need to take a closer look at the details on some of the old houses to realise that this place was once pretty wealthy. Hey, 夏会长。哎，你好，你好。啊，环境真好，咱们这儿风水应该蛮不错吧？是啊，我们这里是很好的。我们开机组就认为这个地方呢，来了这里，发现这里是风水宝地。这应该是有几百年的历史了。这个祠堂是一六八零年做的，一六八零年，有几百年了。啊，这个祠堂的话是我们这个家族的这个聚会呀、啊、祭祖的地方。啊，它这个建筑的话，这个祠堂的这宽度是也一十一米四，啊，重是三十一米，啊，它分为了三地，就是前厅、中厅和后厅，啊，对吧？后厅呢，陈列着立足的这个牌位啊，哎、啊，立足就是家属的进啊，对对，那些啊，那个牌位。然后咱们这个天井设计的，哎，天井是这样子的吧？天井做祠堂子，那是旧这个旧旧材吧？然后我看好像咱们这个每个每个部分还都比上一个更高一些。一般来讲就是意思就是步步高。哦。步步高<笑>哎。哦，这个就是、哎、这个就是罗盘是吧？还有这个自向方向，一个字一个字一步谈，对吧？现在有这样的修编。这个看得很复杂，这个到底怎么？啊、这个很复杂哈、啊，这个一年一年都修不到的。这个罗盘至少还
。啊，这个最基本的能怎么能看出来？怎么用这个？ Honestly, I couldn't understand half of what he was telling me, but the gist of it is, you need to use the law pen compass in conjunction with all these books. That, 师傅，那要比方说，我现在想在这儿建一个祠堂，您通过这个罗盘怎么能告诉我这是一个好地方？啊，就是这样子吗？ So, first, you use the compass to determine which direction your house will face. Then, you tell this gentleman your four pillars of destiny, which sounds like a cheesy kung fu movie, but is actually just a complex version of your star sign. Finally, he uses your pillars and your compass findings to look through his feng shui dictionaries, where each entry tells you your fortune for a particular day, rather like a daily horoscope. Simple, isn't it? Check it out. So many locots and no one to eat them. Mmm. Wow, oh, that's delicious. Nice and sour. Oh, see what else they have. Part of Hanxing Village's good feng shui lies in the fact that it's bounded by mountains on three sides and a wide river on the fourth. This made it easily defendable, so the villagers had time to get on with other pursuits. Oh, that's interesting. Doesn't taste one bit like tea, but um, it's actually salty, and it tastes a lot like sesame. It's a bit like soup, actually. This, I've never had. This is our heritage. This is called Lui Cha. This is Lui Cha. This is our heritage. Oh, Lui Cha. Oh, Lui Cha. Lui Cha likes Lui Cha. Oh, this is the tool. I can see how to do this. Oh, you can turn it on. Oh, use this to do it. Oh, use this. Oh, can you show me how to do this? 这个是大米，哦，这个是大米，大米。A handful of rice, a generous portion of white and black sesame, and lots of peanuts go into the mix, as well as oil, salt, and plenty of hot water. <laughs> yeah, I can't describe to you how amazing that smells right now. This really nice fragrance of sesame just bursting out of that mortar. 真香！我说的是 ，there's a lot of hard work going into making this tea. I feel a bit bad about letting this、uh, this lady do it for us. 阿姨这样的，我我来来吧。我看这挺累的，这太费劲了。我来吧，我我试试。说的是 ，it's not as easy as it looks. I mean, there is a bit of skill involved in、uh, grinding up all of the ingredients, but. Doing it yourself means you get this really amazing fragrance just coming right out of the uh, the mortar. This is still going to take a long time. Ah, this is the last step. Ah, let's go. Smell that? It's the smell of hard work. Can't wait. Even though I couldn't complete the whole process by myself. Hmm. Smell it. Well, I think my this is not enough. Smell it. And nearly choked on all of the,、uh, the ingredients. I think I need to work on my grinding skill next time. But hey, there was an extra seasoning. Flavor of hard work. <laughs> Nowadays, most new villages look like this. The construction of bigger roads has persuaded many locals to move to more accessible places, like Little Westlake Village. It's a bit sad to see villages like Hanxing slowly deteriorate, but this is just a sign of the times, 
and of people wanting to improve their living standards. Oh, uh, sorry, kind of lost track of time. Uh, didn't come here to play with kids. Actually came here to try one of the local specialties called um, pearl powder that you is famous for. And uh, oh, I think they're making it over there. Let's go have a look. Yeah, <laughs> <笑>吓到 <laughs> Getting a little bit classic just looking at all of these uh, these these pearl balls moving around. It's uh, a little bit mesmerizing. <laughs> okay, so it turns out she was just pulling my leg. The pearl balls are actually put in a kind of savory porridge, filled with peas and minced meat. It's a pretty hearty staple food, normally made for special occasions, but these days you can get anything at the local supermarket. Modernity has given Yudu a facelift. It's younger, cooler, more current. It's still proud of its past, but at the same time, Yudu isn't afraid to move on. really is a lively park. You know, Yudu has had a long and sometimes difficult history, but to this day, people still have a positive outlook on life, and they've managed to keep all of their traditions and culture intact. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode of Travelogue. I'm Taran, and I'll see you again on the next episode.